Well, hello everyone and welcome to another Hacker Quick Byte platform review. Today we're going to be looking at a platform called Nearpod. Nearpod is a way to create engaging presentations for teachers or for students. It can be used on the web or on an iPad as an app. Uh, there's a lot to it. I'm just going to show you some real simple basics for you in your classroom. So let's get started. Just go to nearpod.com. If you do, you come to a screen that looks like this. You'll need to register if you haven't already. Um, if you do register, you just got to click on the login. Another key part about this screen is you'll see join session. So if I need to join a live session, which I'll explain in a little bit, um, just put in a key here and I can join a live session. But I'm going to go ahead and log in. And I come to a screen like so. Again, I can join a session here if I'd like. Um, all right, when I come to a screen like this, uh, this is my library, so this will allow me to see any Nearpods I've created before. Explore will allow me to look at other people's Nearpods. Join, that means I can join a live session if I want to. Create will allow me to create a new one. And Reports will let me know how many times I've shown a Nearpod or how students have answered certain questions in a Nearpod. I'm going to go ahead and go to Create. And I have a menu up here with new presentations. I can publish from here. I can preview a Nearpod. I can go ahead and make a live session. I can delete one, or I can share it, or I can copy it. Let's go ahead and create a new presentation. So I'm going to click down here to create a new one. I'm going to give it a title. And I'm going to go ahead and add a slide. When I add a slide, I can add content or I can add activity. So I'll just go ahead and add content in this one. And it gives me more choices. So I can uh, add a simple slide, or I can add a video, or I can add a slideshow. A slideshow will allow me to import a PowerPoint that I've already done into Nearpod. So I can make a PowerPoint that I've already created much more interactive. Today, I'm just going to make a slide. So I click on that. I'm going to add text. And I'm going to add an image. So let's go. I can choose out of Google Images if I want, browse my file, Dropbox, etc. I'll just take one from one of my files. Uh, I got a picture here of Socrates. So we'll go ahead and just add that picture. And I'll hit Save. And now my slide is done. Now, this is my last slide. So if I just want to move that slide, I just have to slide it over. And now I have my opening, my first slide, and my last slide. OK, I'm going to go ahead and add another slide. And this time, I'm going to add an activity. And I get numerous choices of activities I can add. I can add an open-ended question, and that will allow students to be able to type in an answer to a question. I can poll students whether they know information or not, and it'll give me a poll about my class or my students. I can quiz them on a multiple choice A, B, C, D type question. Or one of my personal favorites is I can have them draw a visual representation of a concept. And I think that's a very powerful one for students to add non-linguistic representations to a concept they are studying. So let's go ahead and add a just quiz today. So I need to type in the name uh, of this quiz. So this will be Presidents of the United States. I can enter a question, which of the following was a United States president. And I can enter, um, let's see here, John F. Kennedy. Or let's put in um, Louis Armstrong. And I can hit save. If I want, I can add image as well. But I think, or I could add more choices, or I can add another question to my poll. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to add those two. Oh, and up here, if you don't answer or give a correct answer, it'll ask you to do that. So I need to make sure that this one's correct. And then go ahead and save. And now I have my uh, last slide. I'm just going to switch it over. So I got my first, my second, my third, and my last. And so now I think my presentation's done. So I can go ahead and preview it. So I have my opening. I got my demo slide with my picture. I got my quiz with my correct answer. And I got my last slide. So now I'm ready to go to a live session. Okay, 
Before I can go ahead and go to a live session, I need to publish my presentation first. And the way I do that is I can go down to the bottom of my screen. I can hit publish. It'll want a name, so I'll give it a name. Descriptor, if I want to add a descriptor. Audience, I'm going to put other, but I can put other grade levels because you can search by those. Subject level, go ahead and put general, and then I'm going to hit done. And it'll save it. Are you sure you want to publish this presentation? I'll hit yes. And now my presentation's up with all my other presentations, so I can go ahead and click on that, and it'll allow me to go and hit a live session. I now have this pin and so students can go to nearpod.com or the app on their device and type in this pin and it'll take them right to the Nearpod so they can go through it. For our hacker platform review, Nearpod gets four hacks. For learnability, it does take some time to learn. Uh, it's kind of complicated at first, but once you really get the hang of it, it is fairly easy. Cost-wise, you get a lot for free, and that's what makes it really nice. You can pay for some upgrades that sound really neat, and I think they're probably worth it, but definitely um, I would try it out based on the cost. Smashability, it's nice to be able to throw a PowerPoint into it to make it more engaging, but also just the flexibility that you can use it on an iPad, and you can also use it on a Chromebook or your laptop um, or any computer. And school use, I really think if, if a teacher is using it, they can use it at pretty much any grade level. If students are using it, I see it more being probably a 4th, 5th grade, 6th grade, um, all the way up into the university level. One last note about Nearpod is if you're having a hard time saving it, it won't save anything over 10 megabytes, so you're going to want to make sure that you delete some images or some pictures if it's not saving. Other than that, I think it's a great platform. Take some time to learn it. I think it'll help you in your classroom. Well, thank you for following along today. Please join us next time for our next Hacker Quick Byte review and follow along with us on the web at doceo.nnu.edu.